Hey guys, Cody and Clance here from Bar 7 Ranch, and the hunt for what is over now? For a knife shop building. That's right, so we, we've landed on uh, a builder to build Clancy's new knife shop. We're here today at Eagle Ridge Barn Builders in Itasca, Texas, and today we're gonna walk the lot, decide exactly what kind of building Clancy thinks is gonna be best for his setup and what he's wanting to accomplish out of out of his shop and then we're gonna go inside and sit down with one of the sales guys and design it, get the windows where we want it, uh, get the paint colors that Clancy decides he likes, do all that kind of stuff. So come along with us and let's see, see how the process goes. So guys, we're here, this is Caleb Miller. He's one of the owners of Eagle Ridge Barn Builders. Mm -hmm. And Caleb, just tell us a little backstory about how Eagle Ridge came to be and, and you know, really the story of your family and how y'all got here. Okay, so we come, we were born and raised in Costa Rica. Uh, we moved here about nine years ago and we worked for a shed company for about four years and then Anthony was a shop manager then. I was out building. And one day Anthony called me and he's like, hey, we can do this better. So that's where it all started. We started in our dad's backyard, built a pole barn. And uh, we started there and it's been five years now. And it's just gone crazy. So there's how many brothers involved in, in this business? Three brothers. Three brothers. Yep. So. Um, moved here from Costa Rica nine years ago and in the last five years y'all built this business from the ground up started out like you said in your dad's backyard mm -hmm. uh, building a shed and to now how long have y'all been in this facility about two and a half years so so y'all do everything from the ground up you start from all the raw materials mm -hmm. frame it deck it do all, everything that's done right everything. here yep. locally yep so it gets framed painted and roofed and then we deliver it to our customers set it up level it everything complete and y'all have a couple of crews that c will build on site yes. if you need something maybe that's too big to transport yep. or or something specific like that yeah we do a lot of on-site builds in like big subdivision where there's fences up and the customer doesn't want to take the fence down and stuff so we will build on site awesome well let's go walk through and look at the buildings that we got here so cool um this one right here is this is a project well it's one of our actually galen's project so it's fully finished and we do not do fully finished but okay. this one is fully finished we're starting to get into it just oh man clamps don't need to see this something a little bit different that way people can get ideas of what they can do and can't do with with something like this so like you like you said this is a fully finished one but this is yeah. not something y'all are currently selling right now this is just like a yeah, prototype this is, yeah it we wanted to do it and see if if it takes off um, right so we built this one finished it out we're trying to sell it if if we see interest if we see opportunity then we'll start doing it but well, I wouldn't think you'd have a trouble getting rid of this. This is pretty cool. I mean, you need to buy this one for Fred. No, I don't want Fred living at home again. So <laughs> I sure don't want to buy for for yeah. Fred. But yeah, this is awesome. So a little, basically, a little one bedroom, kind of a tiny home mm -hmm. kind of deal. You got a yep a, a kitchen sink. with a little cooktop here. Mm -hmm. um, refrigerator? Is there a mini fridge or something there, in here? There is. There's no not fridge. a fridge. Um, there is. I mean, you could put it wherever you want. I guess. We got water heater. And then a mini bathroom, shower, mini sink. That's pretty neat. That's a good little sink. Oh, that is cool. That's awesome. I like that. And then if we walk out the front door, y'all can see what we did with the little porch up front. Let's let's hang out right here for a second. So, um, so Caleb. One thing I've noticed as we came in is there's lots of different styles for the outside. So like this one is a little board and batten mm -hmm. look. So what all styles do you offer for the outsides? So we do the board and bat. We also do the lap siding. Okay. So yeah. a lap siding would run kind of like this, yep. but the, the one above it laps over the one that below it. Correct. Okay. Correct. And then we do just the regular LP, which is the one right beside us. Okay. The regular LP siding with the grooves. And we try and stay with those three 
um, we have done custom. I mean, customers will ask for a custom, so okay. we do that as well. But we try and stay with those three main styles. Now, is there one that's better, has a better warranty than the other? Or are they all it's the same all, covered the same yeah, way? It's all LP, and LP offers a 50-year warranty on their product. Okay. So it's all covered under that. So that, that 50 years is, is like the, the material itself won't anything yes. happen. That, right. that doesn't mean you're not going to have to paint it over the course of yeah. 50. You'll still yeah. have to paint it, do regular maintenance stuff. Mm -hmm. But So that's awesome. Yeah. I really like this. This is cool. So we do have a couple different styles, obviously. Okay. This is our val what we call our value shed. So it's a six foot sidewall. The trim, if you notice the trim, it's the same LP side and we rip it down to three and a half because it's yeah. our value shed. So that's what our trim is. It's a three and a half inch piece of the same LP. It's uh, the inside floor is the same. The walls are the same. They're just shorter, six foot. The only thing that changes is there's the trusses are 24 inch on center. But your side walls are 16 inch on center. Yes. Side wall ever, ever building in the yes. And the floor? Correct. Yep. Okay. The floor is, the skids are four by six treated, and then floor joists are 16 inch on center, two by six. Okay. And then three quarter inch plywood, 16 inch on center walls, and then the difference on these is it gets only one top plate, and the trusses are 24 inch on center. Okay. And this is the value shed model? Yep. So what, this, what is this style called? It's got this... Uh, what do you call that up there? Uh, a dormer. Dormer on it, yeah. yeah. So this is our cabin shell. It is framed out on the inside and I can show you on the inside. It's like it got the deadwood and the gables, corners, everything ready for finish out. Okay. It has a house wrap, uh, two by six headers, two by six trusses. It has a little bit of steeper roof pitch. And then the dormer we can put basically on any building. Okay. Like that is an option we can put on a value shed or any building really that you okay. But this style right here is our cabin shell and I'll show you the differences on the inside. Yeah, that looks cool. So you, like, you like the dormer, huh? Mm -hmm. I think they're cool. I thought he didn't like it. No, he, lo he wants a dormer. He loves it. <laughs> oh, wow. It, it will give you a lot more space. It, it feels more open and gives you light and stuff. So on the windows, you can see the two by six headers on the windows and doors. On the gable ends, there's all your dead wood. That way if you're gonna sheetrock, you can it's ready to go. All you gotta do is throw your insulation in and put your sheetrock up. Okay. On on a regular shed that is not framed like that. I'll show you once we get into a and then you got two by six rafters versus two by, two by four, mm -hmm. and then a double two by six top plate. Or yep. No, two by four top. So plate. it's a two by four and a two by eight on top. Okay. Of that. Yep. So the two by eight will create the eave on the outside. Gotcha. Like a four inch eave. So, like this cabin shell, like this, is it open for does? If, if me, if us as a consumer, as, as a buyer, can we? Can we design the floor plan in here and then y'all will frame it anyway? Absolutely. Basically within, yep. as long as it all fits together, you mm -hmm. can frame it the way we want Absolutely. to. So if we want a small office in the front corner and a bathroom in the back, you can make that, you can frame that up for mm -hmm. us. And I actually have one on the lot that the customer designed. He put electrical, I'm pretty sure he put spray foam insulation in it as well. I'm not sure if it's done yet, but we can walk out and look at that one. Yeah, this model we actually call it this our stampede and this model is we frame it like this every time and it, it is hard for us to keep it on the lot. People okay. love it. Two so bedrooms. Even got a little, got a little attic access mm -hmm. up there. Yeah. But yes, you can definitely start with a shell and frame it out however you want. That's neat. I like that. So y'all build these on site also? Yeah. Is this what y'all call your loafing shed or mm -hmm. something like that? Yep. This one has a four foot tack room. There's a couple of them out there that's just great. So so here's, this building's a little bit, not as deep, but as. Yeah, so this, this is a 10 by 10. And this is a regular gable shed. So same 
eight foot side walls. Um, you can see the difference between the gable and the cabin shell. The, right. the gables aren't finished or yeah, ready to finish out. Okay, so that one of the things where we've been discussing amongst ourselves, Clance and I, is do we want the the opening the door on the narrow side like this one is? I mean, this is a 10 by 10, so there's no narrow side, but if, if say you went with a 10 by 16 building, do we want the door to open on the, the narrow side of the building or on the long side? Like everything we've discussed here, Clance wants it the exact opposite of what I think it needs to be. So, um, well, I figured that if you put it on the long side, it should take up more space. You wouldn't get a whole bench. Well, three foot's three foot, no matter where you put it. Everything yeah, also got your. <laughs> Just come on, you're not going to win. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so we saw these on the internet. Lance and I were looking at them. And so well, what do you call this style? This is a single slope? Single slope, yep. So this Pacific building, uh, about three weeks ago, a guy missed the stop sign and drove <laughs> straight through it. So you, if you open the door, you can still see the tire marks in there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so so, so y'all got to build this one twice, huh? Yeah, so we... <laughs> I hope that's not blood. No, it, it, it was the paint. We we put little paint cans in our buildings and it oh, yeah. spilled the paint. So, I mean, that gives you an idea of how strong our floors are. He came, he took out this wall and basically both of those. Yeah. Just boom. Yep. So we rebuilt the walls, put new siding, painted it, and good to go. Good to go. How big is the actual? Inside this one is 12 by 16, the inside of it. Okay. The, the inside is 12 by 16, then you got a four foot porch on that side and this end. And what do y'all call this? It's a single slope. Oh, so it doesn't yeah. have a name like the other one? No, do you? no, okay. single slope. That, that's what we call it. Now, one thing I noticed, this is the first one we've been on with a porch on it. And I really like the idea of a porch, and I think Clancy does too. Um, so this has a different material on the porch than it does on the floor. Yeah, so that's our Trex uh, decking, and it's a composite decking. We did use the treated stuff, but we were having problems that two years down the road, the treated stuff kind of starts warping and mm -hmm. people aren't very happy with it. So we switched to the Trex, and I mean, that stuff is amazing. You get all the mud you want on it, put a pressure washer to it, and it's as good as new. That's awesome, I like that. So this one is 16, 16 wide, long, 12 yep. foot deep. Yep. Do you elect officials or is it a... Yeah. Yeah, so, it is. So you owned your own land and everything in Costa Rica. You were on, you were dairy farmers in Costa Rica. So what made you want to... Did y'all sell out there? Do you still have family there running the dairy or... No, we do have family there. We sold our land though. Um, man, the, the economy, it's hard. It's rough. I mean, you... I say dairy farmers, we had, at our biggest point, we probably milked 15 cows. Okay. Everything by hand. So we milked by hand, we had to make our own cheese. And then we also raised broilers. Chickens? And, yep. Okay. So we butchered those, and then two days a week, dad would have a route. We'd uh, put a bunch of coolers in the back of the truck, put our chickens and our cheese and stuff in the coolers and go out in the towns and sell it. That's awesome. But, yeah, it was rough. We also planted corn, rice, beans, everything by hand. We planted it by hand. We harvested it by hand. So whose idea was it to move move to Texas? And, and uh, Probably me and Anthony. Uh, we were the two kids left when we moved. Um, and I mean, we had sisters and brothers here, and we would come visit, and we'd see the fancy cars and <laughs> their lifestyle. And we're like, man, what, what are we doing here? <laughs> Let's get out of here. So did your mom and dad come too? Yep. Awesome. Yep. And they live here locally, pretty close around yep, here? Yeah, about five miles down the road. Awesome. That's mm -hmm. an awesome story, man. Yep. Yeah, so dad actually, he was born and raised Amish in Indiana. Okay. And he went to Costa Rica to serve as a, or help at a 
children's home where he married his first wife and they had eight kids and she died of cancer and then he met my mom and married her and then that's when me and Anthony came to be okay and yeah they moved and they're about five miles down the road he, he's usually here he does he mows the yard, picks up trash. I mean, he's 72 years old or something. So he's... So I'm sure now, from the time you moved here nine years ago till now, um, I would assume you're, you're, you have a nicer house than you lived in when you first moved here. You have a nicer car or truck that you drive now. And uh, like one of the things that we hear all the time when people see, you know, that things that we have there say well it must be nice to have money or something but I think you're a prime example of those people that I'm sure people say that to you now you know it must be nice to have a brand new pickup or something like that yeah but they have the same 24 hours every day to get up and go to work as you do right exactly and that I mean that's the American dream yeah I see people or guys my age that were born and raised here and they're still working for somebody I mean there's nothing wrong with that, right? But the opportunity is out there. If you want to, if you want to go and do the work, the opportunity is out there. And you got to be willing to take a risk from time oh, yeah. to time. I mean, I'm sure the day y'all walked in there and told the guys at the other deal that, hey guys, we're putting in our two week notice. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's pretty scary to go home and not have a. I mean, y'all yeah. didn't even have your first barn sold when you built it, no. did you? No, we did not. We we built our first barn. We didn't sell the first four months. We sold two sheds. So, I mean, we did odd jobs and here and there, but it, it got scary for a while. Mm -hmm. But then after the four months, we, it kind of started picking up. We sold one, we were doing one, two a week, and then three or four, and it just took off from there. That's awesome, man. Yeah. Congratulations. I mean, that's a, it's awesome to see people that put in the hard work and the time mm -hmm. and the effort and, and are successful. I mean, yeah. and I, th I think that's something that a lot of people out there miss. And I think Anthony hit a deal on it is there's nothing wrong with working for other people, but you're killing yourself with your blood, sweat and tears for somebody else's dream. When mm -hmm. if you have the know-how and you have the ability, there are things you can do on your own. And, and it just takes that leap of faith to say, hey, I'm going to try it and I'm going to I'm going to put myself out there and do it. So. Congratulations to you guys. I appreciate it. All right, let's move on down the road. Okay. I believe that the whole thing is a 14 by 20. So it would be 14 by 16 inside? Yep. Yep. So do you, I like this one with the ports on the whole front. What do you think? I mean, I can just see you sitting out here on a rocking chair. Yeah. Oh, that might be. Locked. It should be. I'll just hard right. one turn it. This one got a electrical package in it. Got a cutout for an AC. The AC plug and stuff. And this is 14 by 16 on the inside. On the inside, okay. Yeah. 14 by 16. Now this is about the right size for I see some. Look at that. Oh, they got a loft. <laughs> hey, we can put a loft in basically anything. I mean, yeah. What I like something about like this, Bub, is that you've got room to put, you know, Shelving. basically workbenches all the way around it, or, you know, workbenches down one side and have spots here for a stand up bandsaw and a, you know, even a stand up drill press or something in here. And, mm -hmm. Maybe a spot for a desk where you can sit down and you know keep your keep all your paperwork stuff in line and draw up new knives, things like that. So mm -hmm. I like this. They'll clean their shop and they have their system. I don't mess with it. As soon as they pull it out, they'll get everything organized, pick up, sweep, pick tools up. See, they then, put their tools up every day too. And then we'll hand them a new plan. And they take off, huh? Yep. They'll put their, their materials back in, everything they need, and go from there. That's another thing, though. See, this is the advantage. So it's a tongue and groove. 
Oh, I like this. Yeah. Don't you? It's a little smoother finish. So what size is this? 12 by 20. 12 by 20. Mm -hmm. And I think what we were looking at for you was uh, maybe a 12 by 18. Does that sound right? Wasn't it a 12 by 20? 12 by 20, 12 by 18, 12 by 20. So something about this size. I mean, I think this is about right. Mm -hmm. The loft. <laughs> but I think this is kind of what we were looking at for yours was a door in the middle, two windows. And then I think what we were thinking about doing was maybe putting a workbench down one side to start off with until we got all the electrical run. So we're, we're planning on running all the electrical ourselves. Um, it would be way easier to let Caleb and his guys do it, but it's a teaching moment for class where we can do that and you know I can show him how all that's going to work. So, And then we have a, a guy that I used to rodeo with and grew up with that's going to come in and spray foam it for us once we get finished. And then, then we can decide how we're going to finish the walls. I don't know if we're going to put uh, plywood up or something like that. I don't, I don't really know what we're going to do on it yet. So, um, but yeah, I like the size of this and I think it'll be awesome. What do you think? See, if we had it, had the door over here and then we put a lock and then we put a porch on that end, it didn't have a lock. Yeah. <laughs> right? You're right. I mean, you could, if you did that, yes, then you just have a spot for a trash can over here and you'd have a lot. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's your shed. We'll do whatever you want for within reason. What do you like better, Caleb? You like a, a side entry or a or a short entry? I like the side entry because you have all the, your your back wall to work on or with, and then if you want to put a porch or something on the front, and you always have your you have your windows you can look out, make sure Dad and Mom ain't coming chasing after yeah. you or something. Yeah. <laughs> I think I think but like Caleb know, says and you get if you do if you do your porch down the long side you get way more porch. So if you want mm -hmm. if you want to have people sitting there, customers or you know, later on when you move it somewhere, if you got friends over and y'all are sitting out there after you get through making it's way more room than just enough room to have maybe two or three rocking chairs. Yeah. You can have five or six you know what we I mean? only have five or six rocking chairs on our porch we got six on our front porch right now mm -hmm. yeah but i don't know i just I, i'm like i'm like caleb I, I think it's more when you walk in right here you know you just got everything you need to cross it it's all open what i see is a is an ac unit sitting right here you know that's going to make it Either way, it's going to cool it. I mean, it's just no matter where you put it, but. Mm -hmm. I almost, the more I look at it, the, I think you might be better off to put you a door over here because this is kind of a dead quarter unless you build a, I mean, that might be a good spot for a desk or something like that. You know, or you could even fix it to where this kind of comes around. But if you put a door, you know, that's a right-hand door. If you put it over here, it would, it would open against this wall. Yep. And you have less wasted space, basically. Then you could even put workbench all the way down one side of that side over there. But like if somebody orders one today. Three to four weeks today, uh, two right? Two to three weeks. Two to three? That's awesome. Yeah. That's pumping them out, guys. I'll do it. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. So let me let me tell them. So about a week ago, I talked with Anthony, and uh, we got online here, and, and Clance and I had already kind of talked about some things he liked, and we we've already kind of designed what we think we wanted in a building, but we came over today to walk through and get a good idea of what everything is really like. So I, I kind of have a feeling Clancy's going to want to make a few changes and do a few things like that. So that's why we're sitting here now. Um, with Galen trying to decide exactly what we want to do because they're going to probably start tomorrow, you think? Yeah. On on the building of Clancy's building. So, yeah. um, okay. so let's just kind of walk yeah. through it. So originally Clancy and I, when we talked, this is a, what size is that? It's a 12 by 18. So 12 foot on the inside floor. So 12 foot wide, 18 foot long. And then it was going to have a four foot porch on it. So it'd be 16 foot total width mm -hmm. um, 
but I, I think after what we looked at outside and stuff, I think Clancy for sure thinks he wants a okay. yeah. uh, dormer on it. So can we see what that would look like if we added a dormer to it? I have to pause a little bit because I have to do it. This would be with a eight foot, no, yes, eight foot door. Okay. So that's what I put in. We also have like six foot, ten foot, even twelve foot if you want. So that would leave you about a four foot opening on each side at that. What was the size of the last building we were in? 12 by 20. It was 12 by 20? 20? Yep. Okay. And we're doing, Is this is a 12 by 18, right? 12 by 18. So I think that's, you think that's bueno? Yeah. Okay. And you like the dormer. And you, and it, it's going to have a little yeah. porch, a little porch that comes off on it, like it's on the front here. Yeah. Which you can't add that on, yeah. on this drawing, right? The porch I can. Yeah. 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 So we just have like a yeah, four foot of porch coming out here. Back. And back you have two of these transom windows. And what I think is we'll have here on the back, we'll mount a little win a, a unit that's kind of like that one right up there. Mm -hmm. That'll be on the inside. And then on the outside, it'll have that unit like I said, the cleaners for my yeah. office. And that'll be back there in the back where you don't see it. So I think you ought to put you a, a workbench underneath your loft. Okay, that's what I, that's what I would think. That way you've, you, you've, you've got the floor of that, you know, so like here, that loft, the ceiling of that loft is going to be like over to here. Mm -hmm. But you can set your light fixtures. You can put a lot of light fixtures there and really get a lot of light shining down and it'll be closer to where you're working. All right, guys, so that's the end of today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. We had a great time walking through Eagle Ridge Barn Builders here in Itasca, Texas today. Um, Caleb gave us a great tour. Galen helped us with the designing process. Anthony's been a, an awesome help on this. So we've got everything designed. Um, the normal turnaround time is two to three weeks. So check back in in a couple weeks and see, see the delivery and the setup. We're gonna document all that for you guys. If you're in the market for a building, check these guys out. They're, they're a home-based home, home -based company, you know, three brothers own it, and it's awesome, guys. So they're going to keep building. We're going to keep ranching. Y'all like and subscribe and let us know what you think about it.